going to be in the greenhouse. So it's going to be nice and warm. And cozy. And safe. Brain science. These are great bags. Highly recommend these bags. They do work. Whatever you put in here, it's going to grow way faster. Yeah, these are great woven bags. I'm still hungry. I think I might get like a bar. I'll be right back. Oh my god. A couple of walnuts fell out of the dish. That's the 10 minute rule. It's cold. We're gonna go inside and hang out because it's freezing. It's not freezing, but I kind of want to do some back rolling. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna watch TV, some back rolling, and YouTube. I'll be right back. One second. in my pocket, okay? Don't say anything. Shh. All right, here we go.
Yeah, you have to go the other way. Like that. Butterfingers! Alright. Are you comfy? Is this on? We got power. We got power. We got sweaty clothes over there. <laughs> I was at the gym. Oh yeah, back rolling. I love back rolling. Oh my god. Oh, that's a good thing. But I have a present for you. It's a song. We're not watching this. We're just... <laughs> Definitely not watching it. Through the amazing print. An additional 5% off your entire order. So call the number on your screen or scan the code to call right now. I think because my phone. So, I'm going to let you know that I'm using my my phone's Wi-Fi, not my home Wi-Fi, because I still have not uh, installed my new router. You know, I got so many things that I have to do. But this actually works pretty good, my phone's Wi-Fi. With the hotspot. I just have to connect to it. I mean, it should do it automatically. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We have to just get out of it. Oh, 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 we got it. No, maybe.
ti. Really? Come on. What's going on? Why? It never takes this long. Time wants to take the password in again. You want the password? Oh my gosh. Hold on, I gotta put the password in. Don't look. It's. Don't look. I think I got it. I think we got it. I think we get to watch. Taking them down was just how loose they were. Expensive, it's gonna get more difficult. Well, you was out of my deep though. Wow. I mean, it's a mess. You're losing the whole time. Waiting isn't gonna help the situation. Really? Oh, okay. Oh, shit. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> I thought I was going somewhere. Oh, man. This is taking definitely a lot longer. Wait. Retry. Oh. Which one? <laughs> Which one? Which one should we do? You know? Uh, yeah. Should we go to the main account? No. The boss would be pissed if I got on the main account, right? <laughs> Let's go on this account. And, um... Whoa, next. Am I right? Whoa, 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 whoa. That was three weeks ago? That's old news? What's going on? What is this? You're in our act by Old Spice. The finest, one of a kind. Best and only accessory you'll ever need. Grows on your head. Old Spice has their products. Old Spice. Old Spice. Meet the future. A chef, a designer, and ooh, an engineer. All learning. Since the launch of ChatGPT back in November 2022, AI has captured the imagination of corporations and consumers alike. So much so that AI has become a buzzword at many TV launch events this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. However, among the many TV demos I've seen so far pertaining to AI, What's by that? far the most in-depth came from Samsung, the world's biggest TV manufacturer for 18 years consecutively. At a tech seminar in Frankfurt earlier this year, 
the South Korean brand provided a deep dive into how the company is leveraging artificial intelligence to push the boundaries of TV picture quality. Are you listening? Naturally, because I'm going to quiz you after, okay? But what blew our mind was Samsung's revelation that the new AI upscaling Pro Tab is using generative kill technology to transform lower resolution <laughs> images into higher resolution outputs. Going beyond traditional upscaling methods, which typically involve analyzing neighboring pixels and interpolating new pixels to fill oh. in the gaps. Samsung's generative AI technology doesn't just interpolate between existing pixels. Instead, it generates new pixels to fill in the missing information in the upscale image. Oh. The generative model is trained on That's the how they of do it. Users learning complex patterns, textures, and details associated with various types of content. From natural landscapes and urban skylines to human faces and oh household God. objects. Okay, when upscaling an image, oh. a generative AI oh. model will use its learned knowledge to predict and generate the most plausible details oh, that exist stretch. in the higher resolution version of the image. Oh. For example, in scenes with intricate textures, like leaves or brickworks on a building, the AI can generate textures that are not present in the original lower resolution image, resulting in a more detailed and relative... Oh output. man, that's crazy. This process is likened to how... Dude, TV's next year? You have to even more bonkers. Most ...likely word in a sentence based on the context provided by the preceding it's just words. It's gonna get crazier than that. In the case of Samsung... Then we're not AI gonna be able to code. tell the difference between the reality and... ...lower resolution image. In reality, are the pixels that the AI generates to produce is that happening right now? Version. Samsung refers to this technology as quantum super resolution. Quantum super resolution. Neural network mainly designed I for need the it. purpose of upscaling, powered by the company's most advanced NQ8 AI Gen 3 processor we that's ten times faster and has eight times as many neural networks as its predecessor last year. The neural network is capable of being updated over time, suggesting that its ability to generate missing details and enhance picture quality can improve as it is exposed to more data and undergoes further training. Now, generative fill, as employed by Samsung's AI upscaling pro technology, does not recreate actual detail in the sense of revealing information that was originally captured in the source material but subsequently lost in lower resolution. Instead, it generates plausible details based on learned patterns from a vast dataset of images. This process involves the AI predicting and filling in textures, ages, and forms that are likely to exist in the scene if it was captured or displayed at a higher resolution. In some professional applications, such as digital forensics or medical imaging, such generated details could potentially be problematic since it's essential to have an exact representation of the original data without any alterations or additions made by AI. However, for entertainment content such as movies, TV shows, and video games, Samsung argues that the primary goal is to enhance the viewer's immersion and enjoyment and the generated detail can improve the viewing experience by making the content look more lifelike and engaging without detracting from the artistic intent or narrative. If you can't tell from a normal viewing distance of at least 2 meters away, do you care if the upscale detail was present in the original source or generated by AI? Let us know your thoughts in the YouTube comment section below. Next. Samsung demonstrated its AI Motion Enhancer Pro technology using the new 2024 flagship QN900D 8K QLED against a conventional 8K TV that's covered up to hide its identity. Although judging from the intermittent pairing artifacts on news programs containing mixed edits, the masked television was likely to be a Sony. Probably the Bravia Z9K with two both left at its default setting of high. According to Samsung, AI is used to detect moving objects within the video content, such as a ball in sports games or scrolling text in news broadcasts. 
which will in turn be enhanced by string interpolation to reduce motion blur and gutter, delivering clearer and smoother motion. Perhaps more remarkably, Samsung's AI Motion Enhancer Pro algorithm can also identify specific types of sports, for instance football, baseball or golf, allowing it to tailor its motion smoothing effects more precisely to the typical speed and movement patterns associated with each sport. Energy efficiency is another critical area where Samsung has deployed its AI innovations, and the result is an AI energy mode which harnesses the enhanced neural network capabilities of the company's flagship MQ8 AI Gen3 processor to analyze the content on screen in real time and adjust the TV settings accordingly to save energy without significantly compromising picture quality. At its Frankfurt Tech Seminar, Samsung set up a side-by-side -side comparison between the new QN900G versus last year's QN900C, both in out-of-the-box standard mode with eco settings enabled. And despite brightness and colors looking similar on both televisions, power consumption measured lower on the QN900G, nice. courtesy of the new AI energy mode. I'm gamers, sure the European has introduced a new AI will be auto game mode which excited about those bad news game preset to match the game genre, optimizing visuals <sighs> without the need for manual intervention. Samsung's AI approach utilizes a font recognition engine within the processor to detect the title of the game displayed on screen, enabling the TV to understand the type of game being played. Whether it's an RPG, a sports game, an FPS, or any other genre. Once identified, the AI will automatically select the appropriate game preset to suit that specific type of game. For example, if you are playing an FPS game, the Samsung television will switch to the FPS game preset to enhance shadow detail and visibility in darker areas improving your ability to spot enemies lurking in the shadows. <laughs> While the AI Auto Game Mode is designed to operate automatically, you still have the option to manually switch between the game presets if you prefer. However, the aim of this feature is to eliminate the need for such adjustments by ensuring the optimal gaming preset is pre-selected without user input. There was no mention of AI-based calibration at Samsung's showcase event in Frankfurt. But if you are interested, UK electrical retailer Cafe & More, who have kindly sponsored this video, are offering their in-store calibration service at only £199 if you buy selected TV models from them. I have personally trained their calibrator David Corner to my high standard. He will run in the television, calibrate it and deliver it to you after having the calibration approved by me. Nice. We've been doing this for almost That's actually years, a really good price. I highly recommend that. Been excellent. So please give But I think uh, call, within the United States, Value Electronics TV, has a great or even any new TV deal. A competitive price with top-notch customer if you service. Purchase you your support. television from okay. them, which I highly recommend that. AI TV technologies were very this back roller is amazing. Most of them are only available through the brand's cutting edge MQ8 AI Gen3 processor reserved for the QN900G. After HD this back rolling, I'm going to eat this mushroom. And uh, I should get my superpower. AI Gen2 processor, whose AI enhanced upscaling and motion won't reach the Stay. highest delivered by the top tier MQ8 AI Gen3 chipset. To find Say out what? other key differences between Samsung's new 2024 TV model, please watch our explanation video by clicking here. here. <laughs> G4. That's such a good TV too.
If those are the speakers on this TV, and it sounds actually really good, only because I have a lot of bass traps. I feel. Because it didn't sound that good. What was I looking for? I gotta get so my one. Akuma Legacy officially begins, and I want to obviously wanted to approach this one a bit differently than the previous because we did do Akuma Legacies before. We did one when Street Fighter V Akuma came out and played through a very large majority of the games that the dude was in. And while fun, doing a basic arcade mode I think is enjoyable, but similar to the Street Fighter Legacy we did for Street Fighter VI, I kind of like going back and reflecting and remembering what makes this stuff so good and how different it is. So we have to look back at version one Akuma, 1994. Super Turbo. This yes. year is argu arguably one of the best years of Capcom fighting games. Did I watch this ever? Already? There's just so many things that Capcom is producing in this time frame that it's crazy. Super Turbo is the last version of the Street Fighter 2 series that would effectively come out outside of iterations that refine it later on. In the same year, X-Men Children of the Atom comes out, which is also the next part of the Akuma Legacy, where uh, Akuma's added to that game. In the same time, Darkstalkers first hits the market in 1994, and they also have, like, Alien vs. Predator Arcade. So there's just a ridiculous amount of games hitting in this year for Capcom. They're kind of finding their stride. And I feel like Akuma is one of the best examples of that, because as much as it seems like Akuma is a giant main character of the Street Fighter series, going back to Street Fighter 2, he's really not. If you did not know anything about the selection process of Akuma or getting him as a secret boss fight or anything like that, you would never see this character in this game nearly ever. The biggest tip off is obviously the introduction screen when you first are waiting for uh, the quarter to show up in the machine. There is the usual attract mode from Super Street Fighter 2, but there's like this weird shadowy figure in the background. And that shadowy figure obviously is Akuma, but it's the only inclination of its existence. I had the 3DO version. version. Of the game. It's really funny. It wouldn't be until like that thing, you see like the that 3DO, 3D version to have was a so fucking back. expensive. I spent his, his character actually prominent $600 for this box, fucking machine. Like, oh, this is a big and I got like a bunch of games that, that were actually really good. Like that Street Fighter. Together as this evil guy, and I even remember rumors about that. People would say, like, Ken and Ryu merged and they turned into a because <laughs> nobody knew anything. Like, he was easily one of the most mysterious characters, like, ever. Even when you go through the process of selecting him in the arcade version, he's like blacked out. He's like a blank slate character, and you're just like, what the heck am I even picking? And this was sort of the first time I remember there being a character select code in even an arcade version of a fighting game. Uh, I think there might have been some in instances before that there might be something in an SNK game or a Mortal Kombat or something along the lines. But at least in 1994, I didn't know anything about this. It only made eventually you didn't know anything about around that? Like, oh, Everyone knew about that shit. No, I'm just kidding. You can play as, but you can play as him, and, and we did it. You know, we have to go through the character select code every time to go through it. And funny enough, enough depending on the version you play, the first version of the game that's just completely screwed up uh the arcade version of the game the cpu difficulty is notoriously jacked it's almost impossible to play it made the whole game freak out trying to figure out how to beat me it found a way god damn it bro <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god Fighting for my life, dude. I'm sitting here fighting for my goddamn life. Unless you know tricks to get around the AI. And Akuma was no different. Weirdly enough, the version we played, which was Super Street Fighter 2 X, that version of Akuma didn't do much damage. It's almost it almost felt like he was balanced in some way. It almost felt like they knew that people were picking this dude in arcades. So they're like, oh, we're gonna balance him a little bit. I don't know if that's the case or not, but our playthrough was 100 percent a struggle. Wow, he did that to avoid chip kill. I don't believe it, dude. Holy shit. Computer will use invulnerability on supers to avoid chip kill. <laughs> oh no! What? Chuggled into it. Ugh, I can't lie. It doesn't fucking matter if I 
trying to jump in. What the hell? The camera. Oh. The new one. One of my favorite compliments ever is when someone comes into my house and they're like, wow, it smells amazing in here. Lately, I've been using Glade's new Fresh Collection Juniper and it, and it smells immediately amazing. transports me right to the spa. All right, you guys ready to go over all the new updates? What's happening at that Jamagoki event where people are play testing Akuma? We got a bunch more Akuma info. Uh, we have more balance change reports. I have a friend of mine that's actually at the event right now. Really exciting. He's testing stuff for us. So I can uh, give some more info on a bunch of things. And I think I want to go over this uh, dry reversal change uh, as well in a little bit more detail because I'm seeing people still panicking that they didn't nerf throw loose but this dry reversal change really helps against that and i want everyone to kind of understand uh why it's a big deal okay first thing though i, I want to go over a funny story with you guys so top player ata was at the event on day one and started a huge controversy over this akuma raging demon single input on modern controls he incorrectly told everyone that you can do Raging Demon with one input. And it started a huge panic. Of course it was Ata. If you guys don't know who Ata is, he's a Ken player. That's all you need to know. Ata trolled everyone and it backfired immensely. Or did it? It got so bad that Capcom themselves had to tweet out and <laughs> just calm everyone down and say, hey guys, you know what? Ata's lying to you guys. The Raging Demon input cannot be done on modern controls with a single input. You still have to manually uh, put it in. But for modern controls, it's light, light, medium, heavy. You don't have to press forward, but you know, that doesn't really matter anyway. Light, light, light medium, control. heavy. Light, Remember light, that. Light, medium, heavy, and forward at the same time on, on classic. So yeah, this is actually a big deal because uh, what Capcom said is it, uh, the, both the Akuma demo build and the final build you cannot do raging demon with a single input and that's interesting because that tells us that they're not actually playing the final version of this game and all these balance reports that we're getting might not be final so that's that's cool that explains a lot of things you guys are panicking because we haven't had any info on lily uh no jury no something really on ken uh not on white also, hair on this nerf to the ground and barely given anything so like everyone's like panicking but like once again guys they, they can't test everything they have no access to training mode there and they only have like 10 minutes at a time so yeah keep it in your pants uh we only have to wait till may 22nd and we'll get the full scope of the notes here so yeah there's still hope Ooh, like, that's for close. example if they need to do something like a really big change like adding new moves to lily or something they're gonna save that for the for the final build of the game so that's cool thanks ata Thanks for getting CatCom to speak out and confirm some stuff. You know, all this could be avoided if CatCom just gave us the patch notes now, you know? Like, Tekken 8 gave us the patch notes like a week ahead. You know what I'm saying? And it, would, it wouldn't start, start a panic. You know, Ata the god. <laughs> Good old Ata. All right, let's go over uh, the small patch notes stuff that has been reported. Nothing nothing too crazy has been added, but I got White Wind to clarify some things for me and my buddy at the event. So first off, uh, Marisa's forward heavy kick target combo can now go into level two. Her charge heavy punch can combo to medium punch on hit naturally. Ooh. And her back throw in the corner forward dash not in throw range, but still in standing medium punch range. Okay, let me go over that. Okay, so Marisa's forward heavy kick, this target combo. Dude, I forgot she had this, guys. Do you guys remember she had this? Nobody uses this. That's probably why they buffed it. So she can now go into her level two from this. She can't like drive rush or anything. So, I mean, that's okay. I, I guess that's gonna help like her corner combos. Cause like if you, if you if you go into like, you know, OD Superman punch and you need to go into level two, you need to spend a little bit more meter to get some more damage. Like you go like, like this into level two, but that costs a lot of meter. So now I guess you can go like this and then target combo and then level two, you know, you know what I'm saying? So a little, a little little damage, but they're looking at target combos that, that people aren't using. Uh, the other change is for charge heavy punch. 
it's plus six, uh, but her medium punch is seven frames. So now this will combo naturally. Uh, before she needed a counter hit or a punish counter. I mean, it makes sense. If you if you land this thing, you you should be rewarded for a big deep. So then mm. now she'll get yeah, so cute. This is a cucumber. It's so to, yeah, cucumber uh, lime. It's so tasty. So that's a that's a nice small little buff. I wish they buffed Marius's jumping charge heavy. We were talking about this before, but these like no one uses this man like, at all. Like isn't she even more plus on block when she does this? Also, the ba ba Baba, thank you for the bits. I don't Let's know if I said that right. it. Thank, thank you, buddy. And uh, Sig Cygnus Song, thank you for the Prime sub. I don't know, Danny. I, I've actually had pretty good consistency with it. I, I feel like I've, I get out of the village pretty often. Or not the village, but out of chapter one. I guess. Don't go in there, man. I was called chapter. One I wouldn't village, go. But it's like, Would you go in there? I wouldn't the, go in there. The, the village, I guess, is like Are you still watching? Castle. Are you still listening? It's crazy up there. Don't go. I, I don't actually think these I'm graphics are really good. Be, I have not played the remake, but I'm playing it right now. See. Exactly. What the fuck was that? I think it's just I think it's the villagers that are the RNG aspect. That guy's got an axe. Villagers having like more. Sometimes they spawn in with more health. That can obviously screw you over. say this run is probably more toxic than RE8. I don't know. RE8... I mean, RE8 was tough, but I feel like it was actually a pretty consistent run. It was just very execution heavy. I mean, this game is kind of the same way, but there's... I feel like there's a lot more RNG in this run compared to RE8. Someone, someone died. Go get him!
This in VR would be amazing. What's up, Bob? Dude, the runs have been so cursed. I got a 611 chapter one though the other day. It was insane. <laughs> Maybe I should ask where have you been? Because you haven't streamed in a while, right? I think you were like taking a break until Zelda. Dude, I really like these graphics. Hey, well, Serena. Oh, no way. Nice. He's done. He's done. Oh shit, what'd I do? How'd I do it? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Zelda, dude. I'm, I'm actually really excited. I hope I can get a, a run I'm satisfied with before Zelda, but... <sighs> Man, this game is just... Just beating me up. I feel like maybe I should just My TV stop beating me up. Oh, there it is. And get a good run without it. So We're I good. I feel like I just reset so much more because of it. Do we need more light? What do you guys think? Do you like this on or off? Will you emulate or play on Switch? Ooh, we can, we can even, Switch. uh... I mean... We can add some color? I don't, I don't know if it's, uh... Safe to stream, like... And if you were to, like, emulate it on release. Not sure. I don't know if Nintendo is gonna come for you. Right, I'm bored. Um, next, what's going on here? GTA. Oh, wait, what is it? What? What is this? Get a quiz on GTA. No appointment needed, and all these courtesy services will be included. We even vacuum and clean exterior windows. Welcome to York Reacts. Today we're going to be diving into something really interesting. It looks like there's a guy that went out there and recreated the GTA 6 trailer in real life. This is so cool that this guy took the time to do this because it must have took a long time. It must have took a lot of effort and money and <laughs> I can't wait to check this out. If you're new to my channel, 
I am a developer um, on the previous game on GTA 5. I was an animator on, on that game. I was also an animator on Red Dead Redemption 2. So I'm really excited guy? to kind of see what this guy does and see if he can really create give him a, all the shots in a there thumbs and up. check out what he did with this. So let's dive in and take a look. Okay, so before we dive into this, I want to give credit to the guy who made this video. His name is Andrew Levitt, and get, definitely go check out his channel. I will leave a link to it in the description below. He's done some really cool things with GTA and Rockstar games as far as, like, recreating things in real life. And he's got a bunch of cool videos on his channel. So shout out to Andrew Levitt. Man, I can't um, wait till that game out comes out. Channel. Let's dive in and check this out, shall we? Okay, here we go. Let's do it. I'm making the GTA 6 trailer in real life because, as you probably know, Rockstar bases their games on real life places. And Vice City, the setting for oh, the upcoming cool. game, is based on Miami. Now, I've recreated my this. character of video games in real life. What? Look at this, dude. I didn't know he did all these. Real life. But a year ago, I retired to start a new channel. Mm. But after seeing the GTA 6 trailer smash this release view records, I was like, all right, it's time to come out of retirement. <laughs> He saw the views blow up. He's like, it's time to come back, baby. Let's do this shit. Because this video might blow up for him as well. Like, this is really cool stuff. Let's see it. So Jake and I flew to Miami to track down every location from the trailer and capture wow, the exact same scenes in real life. There are 46 individual shots in the trailer, which meant we had a lot of work cut out for us. Luckily, a handful of the scenes in the trailer are inspired by real life <laughs> incidents, so that cut out eight shots off the bat. This is kind of cool. More to go. Wow. So they got to capture 38 shots, like live shots, you know, like in Miami. Let's see how they do this. In Miami, we were pretty excited to experience Vice City in real life. GTA! JK! Yes! <laughs> JK! Oh shit, what happened? Oh no. Yeah, so unlucky start. Unfortunately, there's no instant repair in real life. So after a quick pit stop, we were back on our way. Tires fixed, and now it's time for GTA! JK! Let's watch the one over! These guys are so hot. I love it. I wish I would have went with these guys to do this. This is so awesome, dude. I love Miami. If you're a fan of Rockstar, it's probably no surprise to you that the trailer is extremely accurate in yeah. its depiction of Miami. In this opening areo, we wow. found the same building, so we were able to make sure we had lined up the shot. It's like if you, it, you know, look how accurate that really was, because you know, in real life. I mean, look, that's how it looks in real life. That's crazy. In Ariel, we found the same building, so job. we were able to make sure we had lined up the shot. It took a few tries to get the right timing of the shot. You're back, and you overshot it. <laughs> Good tries, though. We're, we're just practice. Shut up, man. <laughs> just channel the brown. Brown. Just channel the energy, yeah. Too slow. Too slow. Just too slow, man. This you can is speed a lot it up. Harder we also saw the airplanes with banners, which got me all tingly because you can see one in the trailer. Oh, but right. unfortunately, none of them were flying in the correct spot over the city. Oh. Imagine trying to get the timing of that. Like these guys would be oh my Just god. Make it in post. Aerial shot like fifty times. Like this. For more tries than I'd like to admit, we finally got something pretty similar. Not bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, good. And it wasn't until I was home reviewing the footage that I noticed. Oh. There's a plane. There's a plane with a banner in the exact right spot. Yeah, pretty Three close. Seconds. I think that counts. I think that counts. Yeah, it's From pretty lucky. We rented some bikes to go to the second scene of Vice Beach a few miles away. I almost hit that lady. <laughs> yeah, he did. Okay, they're all NPCs, right? Kind of just feels like I could just like punch any of these people. <laughs> As he's filming this, he's like, it feels like he's really in GTA. He wants to ride by and punch people. I love that. Just rob them with no consequences, you know? <laughs> Everyone here's on vacation, party, and Jake's just here, fully dressed, walking with people. Apparently, no one in Florida realizes it's freaking winter. We got a clip wow. I was happy with, and once again, we found the same buildings in real life, as well as even the lifeguard towers in the wow. ground. <laughs> then we headed to downtown Miami for the skyscraper scene, which was close to the same in real life. You can see in the background this weird building oh, that was yeah. real. It's gonna wow. be like not perfect, but really close. Oh, dang, dude. 
all the developers of Rockstar had to really go down here and study all this stuff and cap, you know, make every little piece. There's a homeless guy. I was just standing over a homeless guy. I didn't even realize it. He was just sleeping right there. Oh, As man. the sun set, we headed to the Venetian Causeway. <laughs> Miami. This has got to be the place in the game where you buy, like, the nicest mansions. We popped the drone up near the toll bridge and got the shot. Yeah, that's pretty good. Seems pretty easy. The next scene we capture, you see... Oh, I can't wait to see this one. Car ...on Ocean Drive. I was able to confirm we were in the right place from this building and... Wow, look how close that looks in real life like look to the left and look at the right wow the colors of the neon glowing up and stuff look really 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 accurate it's amazing this building and then we headed to downtown to capture some late night scenes so it's midnight oh and yeah it's a clubbing scene in the game i figured out that this was based on club space a famous club in miami if anyone asks this is a fake <laughs> don't forget this is a work trip i appreciate jake that you were working late but i at least but, have a drink no, no <laughs> this is a professional <laughs> <laughs> Look at these dudes, I love that. After our amazing time <laughs> sober clubbing, we thought we would end our night at a different type of club, which, to be honest, oh, is they go not to strip club. really my thing. Oh, dude, that's it. Oh, dude, there's no line. Oh, there's no line. I don't want to go. go. I don't want to go. go. I don't want to go. <laughs> we went. It's literally empty. What the, I wonder what day they went, what time of night. Oh my god, it's literally not a person in there. Oh my god, I'm uncomfortable. Let's go shower. <laughs> the next day we headed to Wynwood, <laughs> an arts district that has oh, that's cool. all over their building. I love street art. Oh. Just say what? Street art? I couldn't really find the exact Windwood, an arts district that has graffiti and murals all over their building. Oh, nice. I couldn't really find the exact same location in real life, but this building in the background looks a lot like this big. Not really. So we got a few options, <laughs> and then we found ourselves along the ocean searching for a Sorry, dad bod. Oh, oh, good luck with this. Dance for us. We were having no luck, so I decided to pop up the drone, hoping it would hype people up, and then this Oh, look at that guy. They were raging too hard. They did like Is it Halliver? Oh my god. That's a pretty good shot, actually. Look. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mod, but That'll work. Afterwards, we waited until it was dark so that we could go out to do some donuts! So they're not going to do donuts. Footage, you can see a patterned sidewalk where they're doing the donuts. So we're going to do some donuts real quick. No, they're not. We're about to attempt donut one assist. There's no way they're going to do this. Full donut. Uh, <laughs> oh, didn't make it. <laughs> Now I'm going the wrong way. Look at these guys. <laughs> Dude, that guy looks edged up. He ran a red light. Oh my god. Yeah. He ran a... That's a red light. Did he think we were robbing him? I think so. I think he thought we were just going to actually cheat you. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I'm looking back at this, it we were like, driving sus. You were like doing a little yeah. bank around for one way. Yeah, what the? He ran a red light. <laughs> well, because they're probably what right, the hell is going on. We were to the keys today, five hours of driving for a one second clip. In the game, this would take like two minutes to drive. In real life, this thing is a car for hours. Oh That's my. how dedicated we are, so please like and subscribe and, and go check out the new channel and, and uh, subscribe there too. <laughs> You went? Bye. It's true. Go give this, like I said in the beginning of this video, go give this guy some love, man. Just tell him York sent you. Leave here. This is five hours. We'll never get back. <laughs> <laughs> you can see in the trailer that the right How are they going to get this shot? Has a break right here where the bridge uh, actually collapsed. In real life, they've just triple barriered it. But in the game, they better take all these out so you can just send it yeah. right off. Or just kind of sag out and land it right over there. So we got the shot and it was cool, but more importantly, there was a giant lizard looking Whoa. at me. Oh, <laughs> what? There's two of them. There's one right here, too. Sir, did you know this is in GTA? Are you in it? 
Oh, look nice. how ready it is. Florida. <laughs> we have a tough one. There is a shot of a man grabbing his oh, nuts. Oh, yeah, that's a hard trailer. one to do. The how are they going to do is that? He's on the side of a freeway. So we found the freeway sign. Like in, the, in the back right, you can see the sign. Oh, and we no. found no sign. Yeah, so but you're not going to go there. Yeah. Those cars are moving pretty fast. <laughs> what are the odds this is your fit? <laughs> Oh, they're going to recreate it by themselves? I love that. Oh, Sorry. I can't even tell that that's not your hair. I know. Doesn't it look good? <laughs> <laughs> He's got my hair. Well, no, wait. I got blonde, though. This shit kind of went blonde. Oh, my God. He even almost got hit by a car. What are they doing? It's essential for our future that Maryland hold on to a Democrat in the Senate. This is a good opportunity. Like, I gotta go do a few things. Yeah. Our, on the line. David Trone can go toe to toe with Larry Hogan. David is a progressive. He gets things done. Jimmy John's Caprese Salami Pesto is back. Woo now that's Italian. Alright, so we are in the Everglades where they get the airboat shot. Look at how stupid Andrew looks. Look at how stupid he is. I don't know where we stand, but <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> this video is amazing. <laughs> these guys are great. I need to meet these guys in real life. <laughs> How fun. I think that was a success. There were some tricky scenes to recreate, like the woman dancing at the rooftop pool oh, is yeah. actually a oh. Miami penthouse for sale. Apparently, one half of it is hotel and one half of it is a $21 million condo, which I- Wow, good luck getting that. I called everyone to try to see if they would give us a tour of it with no response. And the only other option was to rent mm. the other side for $4,733 a night. Did they do it? too poor for that. So we oh, Jesus. settled on some good old fashioned creepy droning. The boating scene through the port of Vice City was also. Oh, so they weren't able to. Yeah, okay. So tricky. We found a cargo ship with the same cranes in the background, but we only. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. The only way for us to have gotten the exact same thing would have been to rent two boats because this would have been like a thousand dollars and we weren't down. I lied. It was actually one thousand eight hundred and forty-eight dollars an hour, which is still out of my budget. And actually, on that topic, if you'd like to support the channel, we made a little behind-the-scenes document of our trip with all the locations we went to, wow. our favorite restaurants, and stops along the way. And that's very smart of them to do that. That's cool. Some other extra clips from our trip. If you'd like to do your own GTA 6 trip in Miami, we have all the info you'd need in this document. Wow. It's nothing too crazy, but just a little something extra. If yeah, you feel cool like this out, it's making this YouTube dream possible. Or if you can't support there, then maybe check out the new channel and see if there's anything you like. Anyways, after a week in Miami, we wow. left with 35 minutes. Look what I got. Video, a blueberry RX bar. That's so exciting. Maria would play Lucia. I'm so hungry. Their names are similar, so that felt right until we were filming some really cringy scenes. I literally hate everything about this. This is the weirdest thing ever. I kind of just want to leave. Like, <laughs> this is funny. I never want to be an actor. We went to a nearby convenience store to film a few scenes, and Maria works in education, so we held up bananas. Oh my god, dude. What are they? <laughs> They're full doors? No, no, of course. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't kick it open. Can't kick it open like they do. We're just gonna leave them open. This is so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. My mom to play the corrections officer. Really? Maybe maybe you don't have a dog in your shop. <laughs> <laughs> this must have been so fun to recreate, man. <laughs> and then we had to get this clip. There's actually a news story of a Florida guy just naked gardening, but I didn't think it was good enough, so we have to recreate it, which I'm not excited about doing right now. He's I've never do put it. on a speedo thong thing before. It's underneath here. It's bright pink and it's really small. It's really revealing. I don't want to do this. I <laughs> <too big. laughs> oh my god, Ty! Ty, we didn't get it. We need to do it again. <laughs> We need to do it again. Just one more time. Just one more time. He forgot to press record. 
<laughs> there was also a clip of a girl hanging outside of a car, and he found the buildings in the background, but it was logistically too hard to film on our trip with just two people, so we waited wow. until nighttime to oh, film in San Jose, and that left only one last clip for oh, us to okay. film. Oh my god, f***ing Spielberg over here. Look at this. Yeah, oh know, my goodness. Okay. Pictures, so that way you really can make a good call, because that video, he's coming from like 10 feet yeah. You only got one time. on CPUs. Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPUs are even worse than we thought. Intel's what? Intel's next gen desktop CPUs are at say thousand ray tracing is completely different and NVIDIA's 5090 is right around the corner. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD's Ryzen 7000 X3D chips are having a massive sale right now. I'm talking the 7900X3D is down from $600 all the way to $391 on Amazon. And get this, it's just $329 on Ants Online. Then we have the 7950X3D and it's just $577 on Amazon right now, down from its $700 launch price. I have the, the 5000 version. The is down to $359 with this coupon code. And finally, even the new 5700 x XRD for those who are still on their AM4 boards has dropped from $250 to $230. Obviously not a huge difference, but given it was already at a pretty good price, it's just gotten even better. So yeah, if you're interested in these, I'll have affiliate links down in the description below. Hello. They don't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Next up for today, we have yet another update for Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPU crashing problems. Last time, I discussed a leaked message to motherboard vendors from Intel, and they seem to more or less put the blame square on partners. But like I've said multiple times before, I don't really think they're to blame. Simply put, motherboard makers have been setting higher power limits for years, and because CPUs typically have safeguards for this, it didn't matter. But for whatever reason, some of their higher-end Raptor Lake and Raptor Lake refresh CPUs don't. Well, Today, we now have a better idea of just how many i9 processors are able to run games at the BIOS default settings. The story comes from a user on the Chipel forums who's apparently tested hundreds of Intel's 13th and 14th gen i9 CPUs. And according to him, only 40 to 50% of Intel's 13,900K chips are able to run with BIOS defaults, meaning roughly half of users with the 13,900K will likely run into crashes while using default BIOS settings. And it gets even worse when we move to the 14,900K. According to the poster, only two out of every 10 CPUs can run well in BIOS default. So oh, basically, wow. Basically, this is a serious That's issue crazy. that affects the vast majority of users. And as we've seen, the answer is going to hurt performance. Like I've said before, reviewers should definitely re-review their 13th and 14th gen CPUs, at least the i9 versions. Obviously, this issue isn't their fault, but we need to see the performance of these chips at settings that don't cause a crash. And next up, we just got some new information on Intel's next-gen Arrow Lake desktop CPUs. Starting things off, Arrow Raichu has just leaked the actual SKUs of their next-gen parts. Remember that Arrow Lake is set to bring Intel's new Core Ultra naming scheme to desktop. There we go. Raichu, That's the one. something interesting with their K and non-K models to help differentiate the two. For starters, as you can see, we have the K series from top to bottom, the 285K, 265K, and 245K. Then the 
and non-case views are apparently being changed to 275, 255, and 240. Things are very different this time around, with the non-K models actually getting a separate number besides just removing the K, which I honestly like. I think it helps to better separate the chips, especially given they are quite different. Don't forget that they don't just have their multiplier unlocked, but the K models also come with higher clocks and a higher GDP. Either way, I'm assuming the 285K is the i9, the 265K is the i7, and the 245K is the i5. Uh. Not only that, but at a recent MSI event in China, they seem to suggest the these CPUs could be coming as early as Q3 of this year. Nice. Basically, Intel's next gen could be releasing even sooner than we thought. Next, we have a very interesting story on AMD's next-gen RX 8000 GPUs. Specifically, known leaker Kepler on X recently discussed AMD's next-gen ray tracing. As you can see here, he claims that ray tracing looks brand new. He further expands to say that RDNA 3's ray tracing was based off of RDNA 2, just with some improvements, while RDNA 4 looks completely different. Remember that we've seen from multiple sources at this point that we can expect a huge jump in AMD's next-gen ray tracing, and we've seen a leak that claims the PS5 Pro has 8 level bounding volume hierarchy, which means it could theoretically double the throughput from RDNA 3. And while rumors currently point to there not being high end RDNA 4 based GPUs, if this is true, it would still mean that AMD will be able to compete much better in the mid range, potentially even beating Nvidia in both raster performance and ray tracing. Time, as always, will we'll tell. tell. And lastly for today, it looks like NVIDIA's RTX 5090 announcement is right around the corner. According to a new video from Moore's Law is Dead, things are heating up over at NVIDIA, as he's gotten more information from his sources. And while this is mostly good news, it does include a bit of bad. Remember that not too long ago, most rumors pointed to NVIDIA releasing both the RTX 5090 and 5080 right alongside each other. Now, according to this, his first source is getting the impression that they'll only be launching the RTX 5090 this year, though he isn't 100% sure about that. For those who were hoping for a lower-end option, you'll likely have to wait until sometime next year, at least the way this sounds. But this brings me to the much better news. I always get the 90s. Not just one, but two sources, the RTX 5090 will apparently be announced at this year's Computex, which for those who don't know, is just a month away. Meaning in I'm not getting it unless it, weeks away. they uh, at least the improve the power connector. The release is apparently set to come in either Q3 or Q4. But at least if it is in Q4, it's likely in early Q4. But once again, we should finally get a chance to actually see the chips in just a few weeks. And hopefully you find out the price as well. So while that does it for today, how much do you think NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 5090 will be? Let me know down in the comments below. Same and price. if you like the video, please make sure to subscribe and give it 1599. What is this? The history? We don't have time for that. Uh we don't have time for that. What the heck? Connor Murphy 359i? Damn, that came out good! <laughs> The HDR didn't kick in. It takes a while. It takes like a day or two. Dude, that freaking noise reduction is perfection. Look at that. I see no noise. Wow.
too. It came out so good. I'm so impressed with the new DaVinci Resolve noise reduction. Look at that. Just look at it. I should do another test. I'll do like 1.5 times and see if I can see the noise. Look at that. That's crazy. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, one sec. What's this? How is that shit? That is the best thing right now. Dave is going to do Joe's transformation. That, that there you go. That's the most right here. Right. Just to show it. You know, it's not a bad one. Five alive. Test 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 alive. Nutrition with one mission in mind to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes Let's with no nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of CC's nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to do that test right now. Ugh. After these messages. Yeah, I know the feeling. We recorded it. Yeah, we recorded a half hour in, and we got yeah. nothing to prove for it, which is which I'm is not, pretty. I'm not going to say what I said about the after hours show again. I just <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to do an abbreviated version of what we plan to do. I will say this: we have a we're going to be doing a meet and greet and uh, appearance at a body. <laughs> it's going to be a once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime mm -hmm. opportunity for fans. Uh, and uh, people who follow the show to get a chance to see me, Lee, Romano, Jimmy the Bull, and Greg, as well as Sid, in one place, in one time, in Montgomery, Alabama, on June 21st and 22nd. It will never happen again, at least in the history of, of the world. So no. if you guys yeah. want to see all of us in one place, this is the opportunity to do it. Yeah, Can you sure. believe it? It's going to happen, Lee? It's going to be great. I'll be there, and I just got my Vietnam visa, so people should on the 14th of June to the 31st, you'll see Lee in Moscow, and then I'll be in America at Tennessee Fitness Expo for S4 Squat Fest. Tennessee? And week, I'll be heading out to Boise, Idaho for a few days, so I'll be in some gym in Boise, Idaho, and McDonald's, and then I'll be flying to okay, Alabama. Okay, we're doing a... a few days early. I've got to go see the Grand Wizard down there. 3.5 the times... Dave and then and I'll be flying back home and then it's Olympia and then I'll be going to sort of South Africa. You're gonna be all over the world. That's crazy, Lee. Are you, you know, are you afraid to uh, go to Russia? No, no, no. I've got um two things in the vein will be picking me up from the airport. It's all bulletproof and stuff. So 
There's a five day getting to be the hype to put them down there for some reason. Yeah, I don't understand. Why is that? You're, you're obviously so apolitical. I don't know. What, what do they think you're going to do? Get to the front lines and start firing cannons at the uh, enemy? <laughs> How are you going to do that? Start launching missiles out of there. Maybe. He's not talking about propaganda for that. What they think you're going to be doing, Vladimir Putin, is like propaganda, you know? Oh, no. It's like, it's like when um, Trump spoke to him that time and he spoke to the guy from North Korea. Yeah. It's like, when you're having me talk to him, it's not like he's going over to agree. I'm not agreeing with anything. It's like, war. You're not going to talk to the president. You're going to make an appearance at a bodybuilding event, you know? I know. I'm going to play, but that's why I hate it when the world soccer was on. I remember the Russian soccer team couldn't play. It's like, yeah. why punish the people? They have nothing to do with what's going on with the moment. But someone like, oh, this is one my thing. They said, Lee going there supporting it is giving the people who are in the war motivation and inspiring them. It'd be like, they could have been like, Lee going to Germany and he's got his power <laughs> and he's talking, and, and he sure. talking to bodybuilders and some of those bodybuilders are like, shit. So he's inspiring the troops and that would him to kill more Jews. This is what this person wrote. Oh so my they God. To Moscow, First of all, the Russians are not even fighting the Jews. What are they talking about? Well, the thing is, right now, I'm going to Moscow. So some of these people who might come see the seminar, they could be soldiers. And me being there, so inspired. And yeah. when they go back to the front line, yeah. they're going to be going there. Well, 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 I do find very impressive. I have to admit, I'm, I'm kind of impressed. There's only been two people who've gone to russia that we know of that are celebrities in the last year or so and you're one of them and tucker Carlson is the other one who interviewed vladimir putin so you know either you're the dumbest person in the world or you're the bravest and you know so i have to say that that a lot of, a lot of people can't get visas i hope they have a look at my instagram they think i'm someone famous they think you think you're going to defect over there that's why they gave you a visa they think you're going to stay there i'll be like i have a driver i'll be yeah. like I hope I don't end up like Brittany Griner. So I'm not going yeah, yeah. to say anything. No, well, you're not dumb. You're not going to say anything stupid when you're over there. That's why. <laughs> I'll be like, Putin, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I'll tell you the good stuff. Putin, yeah. you want an arm workout? He's into fitness. I'll take him to the gym. Yeah, maybe you should train him. Now, before you know it, what you've all asked is I talk to Putin, and then the next day there's a ceasefire. Lee brings world peace. There you go. <laughs> you, could, you could be a major player in changing the world. The scope yeah. of what's going on in the world, you could completely end the war, you know. Yeah, and then I have to leave there and go to Palestine and then to North Korea. I'm on this big, I'm on this big tour, Dave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, then it, it, it is a little like unnerving, that. but you know, hopefully, you have a security team around you there. Hopefully, I would ask. I, I don't think the security team's going to stop a missile, but I, I like the idea. No, just so that no one messes with you. That's all, because they might think they look. If you're in Australia, they don't care, but they might think you're an American, which you technically are because you have American citizenship too. So, yeah, um, every second word, g'day, g'day, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah you better, you better keep that action going. All right, I, I, I have a shirt. special I'm guest. Australian. I wear a shirt. I've got a backpack over there that says Kalitsnikov USA. I won't take that one because it's got USA on it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a special guest on this. Maybe you should uh, contact uh, Alex Federoff over there and he can hook you up or something like that. He's still, is he still doing bodybuilding. He's got. rendering 55 minutes an hour and I think it's gonna work really well this is some pretty good noise reduction 
is the fact that you don't know it is, is, well, is Dave, very, very good. What's so hard on Jack? What's so hard on? I'm getting busy. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm holding it, guys. I'm trying to talk here. Uh, uh, yeah, put it on something. Yeah, you're giving us oh, like. Thank uh, God. Thank God. It looks like you have a, uh, you know, Parkinson's or something. I'm used to, I'm used to, I'm used to talking to men on phones and they're going like this. Yeah. Well, my problem is really high. I can't go. Yeah. On yeah. Look, you, look. You need to drop a few pounds. I, w I used an accurate description, but it, you thought I said it as a derogatory story. Maybe, I, maybe I had a little. These are my boys. Oh. I, I, oh. Just an I have to you go make some if chocolate milk. I will be right back. Guy, that would be accurate. And Lee is a fucking cat food fucking lunatic. That would be also an accurate description. They, I've never said they got Columbo even ever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have it anymore. So, but the point I'm making is you can change, you know, you can change your description. Like I said. Yeah, exactly. Um, I could get it. I could get a hair weave. <laughs> I think, I think he Lee can take the tattoo right off now. Here's the best thing right now. Dave is going to do Joe's transformation. That, that's there you go. Transformation right here. Right. Just to show that you know, there's no hair blood. Stabilize, pestilize, and go. the pre-workout because Joe's going to get in shape. I'm going to get back right. and sit. I'm going to get back and sit. Fighting sit. Because um, my job in life is not to break balls. It's, it's to actually yeah. help people, you know, improve their, their lifestyle, improve mm -hmm. their quality of life. Get a light scent that lasts with no heavy perfumes or dyes. Downy Light, the light scent that lasts. You know what's in your cheap protein powder? Well, here to tell us is all-natural fitness athlete Paul Strong. All right, let's see what we got. Sucralose, artificial flavors, soy lecithin, ion charged protein blend. That's not good. Aspartame, soluble corn fiber. That's definitely not good. Transparent Labs protein is sourced from grass-fed American cows and made with only five natural ingredients. Today I'm at Bill's Family Farm to show you where it comes from. Cecil, Cecil. Get that junk off my land. It all starts with some of the finest grass-fed beasts in America. No, not them. I mean the cows. See, most cows grow up inside of a barn and live on a steady diet of grain, corn, hormones, and antibiotics. While beauties like Bessie here roam free and bulk up on grass. All natural. I like that. Exactly, Paul. And most mainstream protein powders are full of artificial flavors, cheap blends, and an endless list of bullshit. At Transparent Labs, we maintain our natural status by not using any artificial sweeteners, dyes, or fillers. Why don't you clean those tennis shoes and make yourself useful? Every scoop of Transparent Labs protein contains 28 grams of whey protein isolate and only five natural ingredients. We think that's flipping awesome. Understanding what goes into your body is essential for health and performance. That's why we source all our protein from grass-fed, grass-finished cattle. Transparent Labs, a trusted source for clean, pure, and natural protein. Straight from hard-working American farms to your shape. These cows ain't gonna milk themselves. Give them the tools they need to, to be a better person. I think well, that you look at look at me, Joe. You should have seen me before I met Joe. Before you met me, you were persona non grata everywhere. So, <laughs> right? I, I rehabilitated you. Your, I rehabbed your uh, your uh, reputation a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Good and thing you weren't on before, it's, Joe, because Dave it's, an hour it's slowly going, before. Lee, it's slowly going downhill again. Though, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going to revitalize it on after hours. But you will. You will. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you will. I, well, there's going to be a big announcement on the Tuesdays after hours. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so Joe, if you want, I will have, definitely help you with your transformation. Thank you so and much, Dave. I appreciate I will, that. I because I want to see you around for a long period of time. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't. Unfortunately, my most popular videos are my obituary videos that I've been doing on all these people who died. I don't want to do one on you, okay? Okay. I got, I got, speaking of that, I got three messages the other day from three different people. The one from Giles Thomas, the U.S. Daily. Yeah. I said, yeah, why? He goes, oh, my God. He goes, Milos had a heart attack and he's because I heard you had died and I asked Milos, was it true? And Milos, I said, no, not that I know of, but I'm still alive. You should say I, I tried to kill myself. It didn't work, but yeah, I tried, yeah. And also, Dave, your friend John, I woke up through the middle of the night feeling shit because I got a bit of a cold. And I thought, then I start thinking, I wonder if someone had a premonition and I am going to die. So I couldn't go back to sleep because I was thinking I was going to die. <laughs> From the, one of my favorite movies, What About Bob? You ever see that movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you fake it, you don't have it. So that's, yeah. Lee's, that's Lee's uh, motto in life. Yeah.
Yeah, well, Derek, I think I got my friend Jeff. What'd you say, Jeff? Your friend John, I appreciate him. He's also a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I said, he said you guys have been talking. We were talking, we were going to be sitting down. John, John, Dr. Barry, or whatever. Scuderi, Scuderi, yeah. Uh, By the way, you owe, you owe him an apology. Man. I heard that you were supposed to be. I owe him an apology. You owe, <laughs> I heard you were very, you never make fun of people with cancer because that can get you cancer. I didn't say that. You don't want cancer. I talk about everything. Reiki, Reiki, cancer. I talk about everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cut it out. Cut it out. Let's get time. 11 minutes, 55 <laughs> seconds. We can, we can take it. We can take a joke. <laughs> YouTube can't I, take a joke, though. The thing was, just, the oh. thing was Joe, Joe, when he was gone on me, he's like, Lee, he said, I was off paper. Because you were gone because you didn't know what he did. This is what's happening. This is what's happening, people. I see it all. Oh, this is what's happening, people. I see it all the time. I run the yacht and the dramas and that. But what I see is because of this money issue, it's been festering, it's been festering, and now the family's falling apart. John, the team of Joe's a running joke with kids for a long time. It's not making the family fall apart. If you were the DA, like Alvin Bragg, you would have had so many innocent people on death row with your assumption of what's going on. So, okay, John, knock it off. All right, we'll go on. John, uh, John will be on standby on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Dave, I'm going to see you at the meet and greet. I can't wait. Oh, you're yeah. going? Yes, I am going to be going. I heard on your show yesterday. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know if you were actually going to be going. I'm going to go yeah, and look forward to seeing everybody. I think a lot of people are going to go to this thing, Lee, because yeah. like I said, it's, it's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for yeah. all of us to be in one place. And, I, and, you know, people like to, they watch us every week. They want to. They want to see us in person, and yeah. we'll never get Greg and Jimmy any no. place together ever again. No. It's impossible. No. This is like a once in a time lifetime eclipse. You know, like yeah. Haley's Comet, once every 75 years, mm -hmm. you're only going to see it once in your life. You know? Yeah. You need to do it more often. Yeah. I, I don't think we can arrange yeah. it. I don't know if it'll ever happen. Well, like I said, get Jimmy there. Get Jimmy and Greg the hardest hit. Like, Dave and I'll yeah. be at your history in different places, but right. you get everybody. You would think Lee in Australia would be the hardest person to get. It's not. It's Jimmy who's like two hours. I've been, and I've been there twice. There was the other package Jimmy was meant to come. Right. And then the other one I was over there, Jimmy didn't turn up and everything. Yeah. Like, and he's only got to go two hours mm -hmm. so, You're doing a lot of uh, American appearances lately, I have to admit. Yeah. Really I'm, there. I'm going to be there from June 8th to June 24th. Yep. My wife's going to be a full blown alcoholic when I get home. She's going to be a full why don't you bring it? You should bring it. I should have, oh, we got the seven cats and two dogs. Oh, that's about right. The oh. And, and another thing he's leaving with, I said, see, not only is she, he's not going to be there, she's got to take care of all the animals, too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Look, it is so good. Box like 40 times a day. She's going to find out. That's good noise reduction. That litter box. You know, that, that, you know, it really annoyed me, Dave, for the last few months, I've had a sore lower back. And I'm really the fuck out of it. Normally, when I first get up, I stop out of bed, go into the bathroom, there's a litter box there, I clean it. But I have a Oh, my back's too sore to bend over. So I've got to let it go 10 minutes until my back warms up. And that 10 minutes that I haven't cleaned, it really starts to get to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, yeah, I'm going to go, Dave. All right, Joe, Joe thanks. thanks. All right, we're, we're good. We're good, we're good right? We're good. Go, go, go eat a salad, stay healthy. <laughs> I'm going to go use that. I'm going to reach out to Dave for that diet. All right. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I, I, I'm on board. Really, the transformation of the lifetime control. There you go. See, I don't, I don't like to be at war with anyone unless it's, it's warranted. And so I, I didn't really have any. So if, if I had insulted him, I, that's why I apologize. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't want anyone taking anything personally. But you know, look, I read the comments. Have you apologized to Lenny? <laughs> Listen, at least Joe wants to change the way he looks. I offered to help Lenny too, and he was like, he, he lasted a week. So. I suppose Lenny didn't really get into that this time. He was going to get rid of Spain and you've missed the I think I could have gotten that, that belly down. I really do. Yeah. And he still I would have starved him. I, I would have put him on fasting. I even noticed when I was doing the cardio for boxing and that, you know, I put on, I went up to nine kilos. Like it's an image when you don't notice that, but doing cardio oh, things, you know, so you're good. Down, you're, right. you know, it's you're so good. Weight, it's not, it's not like this. It's, not this. it's I mean, the, the noise you. reduction. I think that Lenny, if, he, so if, he, if we put him in and induced a coma and left him in there for mm. about a month, I think but yeah, his body, oil this thing, honey just eat up chocolate is so good too. He'd wake up probably looking like a. It's funny though, but it's something that looks more like. It doesn't look like lid, but it just looks like really you can, like it looks hard and soft. That, that's, like that's that's called visceral fat. That's in <laughs>
visceral fat. That's the on the inside. So the only thing that will get rid of that is autophagy. The body has to eat itself up essentially. And the only way it's going to do that is if you fast. So not necessarily. You just got to eat super clean. Speaking of cannibals, have you have you seen that? I've been watching this thing on Amazon. Blog. And you can still get the same results. You don't have to do this. You know, starve yourself to get that same result. I know because fucking, I got my own diet. Everybody should buy my shit, but I'm not telling anybody because you know, I gotta make some money off of everyone. Oh, I didn't know that. When is that starting? He's like, did you see about pictures that they had on them, like a cowboy type outfit? Oh, this is good. I'm bored. It's just a Wait for it. I think he's live. He's live. Have you seen him? No, come on. Uh, Bert, are you going to really take away my cooter? Dude, does everybody really want to take away my baby cooter? <laughs> no, but don't go. Oh, come on. That's like, that's like stealing uh, Fisherman Joe's face. Oh no! Um, guys, this is gonna be the famous, the most famous, dirtiest grill in all of America, my friends. That looks and, tasty. Uh, it's gonna be brought back to you guys by the future. It's never used, never, ever, ever used. Alright, um, just so you guys know, this happens fast. This happens fast, okay? The, the way the shit show happens. See, right now, I, I normally right now, I'd be probably taking a break. Um, I gotta stay really hydrated, guys. I really have to stay hydrated. Okay. My audio looks good. You're live in Florida. But yeah, I'll take a break now. And then next to uh, the show. I think Holliver Point. Because everybody's out right now. They're not really, and you know I'm surprised a lot Everyone's of people. Everyone's partying. Um hey, I need to see what do you guys think about this truck being here for about an hour? I don't know, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, twenty minutes. Um I want to know. I want to know. Oh, you see the manatees? So, guys, those are manatees. Pretty good. How funny. Oh my goodness, look what just pulled up, bro. What the hell is this? Where is this? What the fuck is this? Oh my goodness. Look at that monster, bro. Wow. That's right. Oh yeah, where, where are we? 
recording on that one. Uh, I'm 46 a, minutes. I'm recording right now. I have no audio, but whatever. It is what it is. I don't care. I got on the other camera. I guess. Oh boy. Wait for it. Wow. See, that is a big boat. It's probably going to get shot on you guys. It is nice. There's nice shots that no. You said that over there, there's fucking smack. My, my ears are going to burn. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. Right, who's next, guys? I want to know who's next. Who's coming over here now next? Who's coming next, guys? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, I think I see who this boat is for. Oh boy, we got two. We got two monsters. Oh, it's seaweed. Wow, two monsters. Two monsters. Like, what is this going on right there? But that's his camera zoom and uh, autofocus. All right, guys. You have one shot. Let me tell you right now. You can get the boat to your left or the boat to your right. Comment your answer in the chat. Boat on the right. I see what people are saying. Welcome to the chip show. Oh boy. Everyone wants the right. It's a no brainer. I mean, dude, look at it. It's so much right, more. Guys, I want to know. It looks Which one would you a pick? lot newer. Left or right? We got a CD to our left. Especially with the hull. To our right? What was it? Did you guys catch what it was? I mean, they're both great. Why, bro? Why is he going to be mad? Is he having fun? Oh, boy. Hold on a second. Good luck. Yes. Everyone wants to hey, ride. Hey, well, listen. You have to work now. You know what? This is work. <laughs> having fun is work. I sell work. Fun for a living, mom. Why? Is everything? You're going to go rest on it? Did, it's not. It didn't work? Go, 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 bro. I, I got nothing to do, bro. Go hang out with me. Got it. All right. Thank you, bro. Oh, thank you. Let me know. If you don't have to take money, then call me. Hey, Bert, are you going to go on that electric bike all the way to the public? And you'll make it all the way over and back? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. Let's see what's going on over here. At the boat ramp, you pick left At or the right. the boat I'm ramp. Gonna they gotta make a song. At the boat uh, ramp. Because they got like a car wash song, I think, right? A car wash song? But if they had one. At the boat ramp. Yeah. At the boat ramp. Yeah. Thank you, bro, for hanging out, dude. It was, it was good. I'm glad you enjoyed the food. That boat is you nasty. You're doing cool. Make your dad proud, right? Make him proud. Hey, guys. Andres. See, everybody <laughs> wants to write. Did I lose it? Did I lose my face again? Yeah, they lost my face. Andres has to do his gang symbols or something. All right, this is there, guys. It's not cooking. So it is what it is. It's slow cooking. You got two boats here. Those are pretty monstrous. I mean, and Bert just went to uh, to a road to the left.
Andy's still in here. Um, yes, guys. Um, Joe is. Okay, Romero says the left. We go with the, the boat to the left. Um, Joe has had his own shit, so Joe's had a run of problems lately. Dude. And not just that, he spent a lot of money. Spent a lot of a lot of money. Unexpected, right? Unexpected expenses, which is always the one that hurts the most. Boat stands for break out another thousand. Hold on a second. Um because they gotta spend thousands of dollars. What's up, Leo? Hey guys, if you just joined the stream, we're live at Blackburn Marina. My name is Alfred Montaner, and we're doing a chip show. Are you guys ready for the chip show? Um, mm. we, we recently had, oh boy, hold on. Can I go lower? Can I go lower? That's the question. I think I can. Can I go lower? Can I go lower? Can I go lower? Or is that time out? Time out. For a second. Here, you guys can watch that for a second. Time to bring it a little bit lower. So good. All right, low, low tide is here. So since low tide is here, low tide. I'm gonna show her. Um, it's low tide. So, so that means. All right. Um, it's low guys, tide. So right now, I obviously got this on, right? I'm gonna have these with my Amherst County for the summer. I gotta do some leg rolling on my calves. My calves. This are... is what I've been rocking, right? Oh yeah, I feel Jersey it. Flag. Oh my god. Um, and then I have the. Man, that is. That can be found on my website. Fucking painful. Uh, luxury of Whoa. Uh, buy Joe a beer. Uh, on me. After any Look at that shadow of it. Oh, you can't and, uh, really see it over there. On the Joe, laptop, but I'm telling you, that one is going to be a good one because I can see it. Behind the scenes, he's got a lot going on. You know, that's everybody. All right, I wonder if I need to flip that. Oh, I have nothing to flip it. Oh, dude, is, is that the flip? Hold on, let me see if I can get. Buy Joe a beer on me, Alfred. Ten dollars. Wow. Dude, it's so hot. The guy's just so hot. Oh, he Here's does. ten bucks. Buy him a beer. Hey Bert, if you're watching the stream, I'm not even gonna flip that, dude. I don't have anything to flip that. You oh you guys want I wanna watch me fall again. It's your shot. I hope not. Dude, I really busted my ass on the live laptop. And this would be a better shot because coming from the bottom down. Mm. All right, some of you guys are already picking, guys. Use a stick. Oh, 
Look at the mannequin in the middle. I love Sundays. Yeah, that's right Bird. It's just one bird. That scares the crap out of me all the time, dude. I don't know if you can hear my laptop, but it's freaking, it's cranking. It's loud. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure out some settings on it. <coughs> it sounds like uh, with, uh, air conditioner. Digital live, guys. All right, I'm yeah, bored. Live. Let's find Let's something else. Ooh. Let's see what can do over 40, they're up to. Its own weight, and that's just the door hinge. Sturdy design down to the smallest detail, the Taos. Visit your Volkswagen dealer today and get 0% APR financing or a $1,500 customer bonus on the new 2024 Taos. <coughs> SpaceX Digs Deluxe, the advantages of Captain Star Trek. Ship 30 rolls out for a static fire, Booster 13 undergoes cryo-testing, can SpaceX hit 144 launches in 2024, and Rocket Factory Outdoors is getting close to launching RFA-1. My name is Felix, welcome to What About It, let's dive right in. Starship Updates. Can you feel it? That's right, you can smell Flight 4 in the air. Despite this, it looks like the main focus is actually Flight 5. They want to catch that booster. Want to know why they don't just use landing legs? I knew you would sit back and enjoy. The modernization of the gateway to Mars continues. Over the past few days, the LR-11000 plane known as Marvin has wandered throughout the launch site. This left us wondering what Marvin's next task would be. And let me tell you, the outcome was entirely unexpected. The crane was lowered inside the orbital launch table, a move that confused many of us. However, thanks to the shots from our photographer John, the purpose of this unusual move became obvious. Yep, pretty obvious. Marvin was handling a small clip, which fit perfectly into a hold down crack. It's very likely that this was part of a verification process to ensure everything was correctly fitted. Alternatively, it was a test to see if the clamp could handle the expected upward force. Interestingly, only a single clamp was checked. One ping only. <laughs> this test was likely linked to replacing all 20 linkages, which limited the maximum extension of the Starship. That is crazy. Why did just one clamp undergo testing? It's possible they'll return to check the others later, or it might Dude, be that is one of those so awesome. mysteries. Only time will tell. However, currently, the most attention is directed towards the chopsticks, which are being prepared for a potential super-heavy catch attempt. Looking at the external side of the arms, you can see white spots all over them, possibly for refurbishment reasons. SpaceX has applied primer around the mounting points of the various conduits, which will likely be painted black to match the rest of the chopsticks. We've also witnessed several movement tests of the arms, some with quite impressive acceleration. Unfortunately, the vibrations are still there. Speeding up one such test reveals that it's not just the moved arm oscillating. The entire Metazilla carriage vibrates, transmitting these vibrations to the second arm. That is less than ideal when you meet this level of precision. That's so, crazy. Sense, maybe. One possible solution could be PID feed. A proportional integral derivative controller is a feedback mechanism that monitors output to detect errors and adjust inputs accordingly. For example, starting the movement at 100% and gradually reducing it might produce fewer vibrations while achieving a similar result. By tweaking the individual components of the PID, different combinations can be tested to find the one that performs best. Another approach that has been suggested in the comments by one of you involves using a technique known as input shaping. This concept should be familiar to those who own 3D printing. Essentially, this method involves recording how a system behaves under normal operating conditions and then applying an algorithm. Oh, my cast feels so good. Movement. Let's explain this concept by showing Mechazilla's arms moving the super heavy booster. 
Imagine the chopsticks grabbing the booster and moving it sideways, resulting in the arms completing 10 small swings from the left <laughs> to right in one second. This That's crazy. This frequency of 10 hertz. You can then run this frequency through an algorithm, which in this case is likely a zero vibration or a ZV algorithm. The algorithm processes this information and outputs a movement command split into two phases. In the first phase, the chopsticks move to the right for one second, just like they would without shaking. Immediately afterward, the system switches to moving them to the left for one tenth of a second, repeating the move in the same interval as the vibration. Without input shaping, the arms would simply wobble. However, with input shaping, the arms want to move to the right, while the hydraulics move them to the left, which cancels the movement altogether. To give you an analogy, this process is similar to how active noise cancelling technology works in wireless headphones. These headphones use microphones to detect ambient noise and produce a sound wave that is the exact opposite of the detected noise. When the opposing sound waves meet in your ear, they cancel each other out, resulting in no sound at all, which is what we want. Sweet silence. While input shaping is a possible solution, it is not the only option available. Mechazilla could also use actuators to push the arms in the opposite direction. Mechazilla. That would require expensive hardware modification. A problem with all these methods is that the counter movement must be quick and precise. I have no clue if it's even possible to do this with such a large system as the Mechazilla arm that started. However, it looks like SpaceX already figured out what to do to minimize vibrations a long time ago. If we look at the LC-39A Starship Power, we can see that its arms are significantly shorter than those of Starship, by about 10 meters or 33 feet. This change is now starting to make a lot more sense. Shorter arms will allow them to close them more quickly and significantly reduce the wobble. The trade-off, however, is that the precision required during the actual catch will become even more critical. For this what? reason, we will likely see similar shorter arms installed at the second Starbase tower. <laughs> Are the vibrations a serious concern? Let me know your opinion in the comments. Before we continue with the news, here's a word about internet privacy. I want to share with you all a really cool tool I use for Wise Remote Work, Surfshark VPN, today's sponsor. As a remote worker, Surfshark VPN is my go-to for shielding against online threats. It encrypts my connection, securing my browser and company information, even on public Wi-Fi networks. Surfing the web is safe thanks to Surfshark's incorporated antivirus. It keeps my device clean and guards me from sneaking malware and viruses. I take advantage of the identity protection features for the real-time breach alerts and alternative ID. With alternative ID, I can create new online identity using a proxy email that guards my information from leaks and scams. The breach alert notifies me instantly of any online data leaks, allowing me to secure my accounts immediately. If you're like me and value security while working remotely, I highly recommend giving Surfshark VPN a try. Stay safe and productive. Secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter coupon code Felix for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals slash Felix. Surfshark, surf with your own set of rules. Additionally, some of you have questioned why SpaceX wants to catch the prototypes in the first place. Wouldn't simply landing legs be a better solution? Excellent question. It depends. For the ship, using landing legs makes sense. It will need them for Luna and Martian surfaces where there are no launch pilots. And they would also be necessary for military versions of Starship intended for delivering cargo to remote locations. However, the situation with the booster is a bit more complicated. Given its immense size and weight, the legs must be highly robust, leading to several challenges. First, there's the issue of mass constraints. Starship's design philosophy focuses on reducing mass, not adding it. The landing gear includes the legs, but also the necessary structural reinforcement in the aft section where they are attached. Moreover, this could require additional engine shielding, which SpaceX wants to eliminate in the V2 Starship. Landing the booster would also require a special landing zone. Then the booster would have to be lifted by a crane, placed on a transport stand, and moved back. Same for the ship, and they both land in short succession, so there would be two landing zones for one launch. This doesn't sound like rapid reusability. Add to this the fact that landing legs will eventually break, and you've got yourself the opposite of a system allowing quick reuse. Keeping the philosophy of rapid reuse and not just reuse in mind, catching is the way to go. But there's one more thing. A topic that often surfaces in the comments is the concept of a dedicated catch-only tower. So what about why risk damaging the main launch tower when a separate tower could be built specifically for catching photos? 
prototype. After all, it would solve one big problem. What if the prototypes crash into the launch infrastructure? We're talking long delays if that ever happens. Nature's own is never made with any artificial flavors or preservatives. This one's just right. So every bite is just right. If you keep feeding her like this, she'll never leave. Nature's own goodness is in our nature. A compelling argument can be made for such a tower, however, it's probably not the best solution. One significant issue is how quickly it would become obsolete. After a few catches, such a tower will no longer be needed. However, even without the launch cable, building one would take at least a few months and drive costs up by more than just some pocket change. More importantly, securing uh. the necessary permits for such a structure is a lengthy and complex process, making it inefficient if intended for only a few years. Some might say that we could add launch capabilities later, but at this point, why not just build a full-grown second launch tower? On the other hand, SpaceX has taken such massive risks before, like betting that the concrete at the launch pad would withstand the forces of the first launch, it didn't. Oh my god, they're getting so... Steroids are the most popular they've ever been in the fitness industry. And just as their physiques have gotten bigger, so has the industry and the number of professional fans. Calling to see if the industry and its enhanced athletes are causing more harm than good. I'm here to find out the truth and nothing but the truth. Do you know what? I actually don't know that much about steroids, but I think I know who might. Let's go for it. <laughs> Let's try it, Come on in. Okay. Oh, no. Cinnamon. Got a good mic. Jesse. My man, what's up? Ask for more steroid advice. No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> yeah, so am I. <laughs> okay, um, I, I have a few questions for both of you, and I feel like because you guys are massive men, you're the perfect candidate. My main goal would be to find out the side effects of steroids, but also talk about its potential glorification in the industry. When shouldn't somebody take steroids? <laughs> Almost <laughs> always. <laughs> uh, That's when they shouldn't? Uh, yeah. Most people shouldn't take steroids. Why? I think because steroids have such a huge list of negatives, and the positives are very curious and very specific that you would need a high degree of justification for the positive. Would you ever consider hopping on? Maybe. Okay. We will see what happens. Would you ever take steroids? Definitely. I would. What would you say, like, the, the kid that looks up to someone and just wants to hop on gear because they don't have a good physique and they just want to quickly, I want to look like C-Bum. What steroids can get you is a more muscular version of yourself. Very few people cross a sewer lock and really just want to look like C-Bum.
um, what they want is to be like um, to be famous, to have a following, to have a beautiful physique that they're proud of. But surely this is all speculation. I mean, there is no way that these influencers could unknowingly convince kids to take steroids. That way they look like them, right? That would just be crazy. Who's your favorite influencer? Anthony. Why? I like the physique, I like the shoulders. Would you ever take steroids? Probably. Oh, and I get big. You would? I get big, yeah. You would, would you, do you want to look like Sam? And that's why? Yeah, you would. Quite frankly, statements like that are very concerning. So to further deter people from using PEDs, I had Mike and Jared break down the dark reality of being enhanced. So they're not fun to take. Are they really not fun to take? It affects almost every single system you can think about. Many of them get a super physiological effect where they get better. Many of them get a degraded effect. So steroids actually, in high doses, especially for some individuals at risk, can cause psychosis, for which you can be hospitalized for. Delusional psychosis. There are incidents in the literature. I know of folks that have had this and, and their lives weren't very downhill shortly thereafter. I know people who have gotten physical altercations with the police while on steroids and were, uh, they did not survive. Are you natural? Yeah. Are you gonna say natural? Uh, yeah. Why'd you hesitate on that? Because it's just so tempting and it just gets confused. It concerns me that these young people are even considering taking PEDs, but the reality is, I don't even know where to get this stuff. So I decided to meet up with a former steroid dealer. Greg who said, Daddy Greg. Greg. Sensei Greg. Okay, so, <laughs> <Greg. laughs> so funny. Yes. Why do you want to even talk about this on the internet? Well, honestly, I, I want people to know about the dangers of this and how common it is. And, and being somebody that used to sell it, uh, people think it's just body to body. It's yeah. everybody. What was the most dangerous part of selling it? Honestly, at the time, I wasn't really worried about anything aside from getting caught. Like, there was okay, nothing okay. that I was worried about, and you're selling it to your friends, so I'm like thinking, well, what's going to happen? Is this my friends? I know everybody. It's not like I'm having an online business and selling to strangers, so, I mean, it's like, it's your buddy. Okay, hi, hi buddy, you yeah. want some? Okay, so, other than just getting caught, I didn't really have any worries. And then, once you got caught, were you, like, arrested? Oh my god, French fry. Make it a Friday. Put the ad away. Yeah, came in my room at 5 in the morning. No way. No way. Like, oh yeah, it's holy crap. Yeah, absolutely. I lost my career as a school teacher. I'm lucky enough that I was able to get famous on YouTube to be able to do the coaching to keep going. Because wow. for a while, I'm sitting on cardboard boxes. Like, literally, I had nothing. I owe money. I have huge fines. I'm like, what am I going to do? Did anyone like under the age of 18 ever try buying them from you? For me, no. I, my friends were older. What I find happens is people get them from people they know. I find that when kids try to get it, they're trying to get it from their kid friends. So, so I'm assuming that's where they're, they're buying either fake stuff that's of low quality. This happens all the time as it really is with any substance. No matter what, people are cutting it and trying to get used to it. One person would just ask, can I have your empty bottles? I'm like, yeah, what am I going to do with this here? He ends up just filling it with oil and selling it. People being like, boom, here you go. So what is the current problem within the fitness industry? of influencing these kids to go down the wrong road. Now we've got such famous guys, we've got Chris Bumstead and Sam Fulick, who we all can tell are taking something. And so if you're a kid and you want to look like that, you know you're going to have to take something. With social media pressures to look good, I think that's what's causing everyone to do this. So do you think that the fitness industry is glorifying steroids right now? I think that indirectly that they are, without even realizing it, I think that they absolutely are. Now that it was obvious that the popularity of social media has greatly increased the temptation to take steroids, I wanted to ask the influencers themselves what they think about PEDs in the industry, both the openly enhanced and the ones who claim natural. We've got Daddy Noel in the house. How you feeling? Uh, good. Are you natural or not? No, I'm not natural. Natty or not? Natty, dog. Let's go. Let me see the... Am I feeling? That's questionable. Are you natural or not? <laughs> it's questionable. Why are you not natural? Because <laughs> I'm a professional bodybuilder. You're a professional bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not natural. No. no. You are enhanced. Of course. Okay. So why are you enhanced? Uh, to compete at that level. Basically, at that point, it's, you're evening the playing field. Otherwise, you're going to be at a disadvantage. Natty or not? Natty. What do you say if someone's calling you not natural? It is what it is. It's a compliment? Natty or not? Natty. Okay. What would you say if someone says you're not natty? I don't know. Thank you. Natty or not? Oh, I'm not. Not natural. No, You're no. open about that. Do you think that the fitness industry is glorifying PEDs? I could say, yeah, I would see how that can be viewed from a perspective that we glorify PEDs. I can also see 
how it's being glorified that you're open about it and not, you know, that you're doing it. So just being honest, you know? But what is natural are these flexible meals that all these bodybuilders are missing out on. What do you say to a fan that comes up to you and says, bro, I want to eat big like you? What is your advice to them? You have to start somewhere and uh, all the Jews don't got to take the house work off from you, so. You can get 10 meals cooked and delivered to your door for $5.94 per meal by using code Jeff. I don't like romanticizing these sort of things. I am open and transparent that, uh, about the fact that I am in Haas, but I've never told anyone what I do. Listen, we've all suffered from diet burnout. It is not easy. But luckily, with Flexible Meals' unique flavor verse, they have you covered with so much variety. The menu changes weekly, so you will never be burnt out. I wish I would have started a little later in life. Yeah, I started bodybuilding at a young age, and you know, your body has a lot of potential on its own. And even though the meals change, they always have a certain amount of keto, gluten-free, dairy-free, high-protein meals on the menu. And actually, the large meals versus the regular size meals have 50% more protein. Little known fact, they actually have the highest protein per meal compared to everybody else. You'll see a lot of gym bros going to the gym, juiced up, and they look like so. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> shocked at the fact that I went into this thinking that people were going to be telling me, oh yeah, boys are great, being enhanced is great, but that's just not the case. And of course, when I asked people who they were here to see, the most common name was Sam Soto. Okay. Keep my dog, Sam. Sam, pretty much. Really want to see Sam. Kind of look like Sam So, Would you take steroids, or do you have any plans of going to the dark side? MK677 and RAV140, they're, they're maybe on the agenda. And so I was curious to hear what his message would be to his fans if he would touch on the subject of steroids. I'm curious, what is your motto? for your fans, like something that you could leave with them. Would you mind taking a guess on what that could be? Crush your works. I'm gonna say it's either do your cardio. Crush your works, get big. Get big. If you can consolidate everything down in two words, it's just get big, and let's be real. Is that your life motto? I try to be real. Any advice for someone that you know looks up to you and comes up to you and says, hey man, like, I'm a little discouraged, I'm not getting as huge as I want to, what's your advice to them? I'd say first off, more than likely not counting the macros, more than likely not doing the cardio, not doing progressive overload. I mean, these are things that you can optimize and make gains. It's not rocket science either. Right on. Appreciate you, brother. Good to meet you, all right? Oh, yeah. So we've established that, yes, there are people who want to take PEDs to resemble the look or the lifestyle of their idol. Yet after speaking to them, the majority seemed quite transparent about their use. It made me wonder if there was potentially another reason why kids would be willing to take PEDs. Take that desperation to, like, look like whoever, to, to be cool, to get a girl, whatever. What they want is to have a big hunter girl not in your direction when you're at the gym. Ah, yes. The lifelong pursuit of us men doing everything we can to attract women. Well, let's ask the ladies what they think of the pants we see. And if they even they don't like it. Attractive. Do you find steroided out bodybuilders attractive? I think more of like a, like a mild bodybuilding style I find more attractive. I, I don't like the big traps. <laughs> what, it looks like they have shoulders inside shoulders? Yeah, yeah. I can okay. that. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Michelin man, look. He's gonna be healthy you know everybody has their own body type just be healthy if he looks like he's taking stuff and he says he's not natural i mean is yeah. it a turn off no it's not a make or break for me i like to think juicy veins girthiness very juicy yes do you find it like odd if a guy only took steroids to impress you yes i think he needs to be himself he doesn't need to do steroids and he doesn't care much about himself i feel like nobody should alter their body chemistry for anybody else but themselves so you hear that guys most girls don't even find enhanced physiques attractive I honestly been shocked that See the that guy. Have been so open about the risks of PEDs. And I think the message I'd want to share would be that the biggest names in the industry didn't get there solely based on how they look. When we like started back in like the first year yeah. or two, we thought maybe like a better physique would help. Now, bro, there's people who make a living off this who don't even have a good physique. Like, if you just have good content, that's all you need, honestly. Trying to describe the one creator who had been transparent about their PEDs, but hasn't glorified being enhanced, and has built his brand off genuine positivity, it'd be no. I personally, I look up to you. I look up to the people that are positive in the industry and leave a great mark behind. What final legacy would you like to leave on this earth within your audience, within everybody? And what was your motivation, you know, to, to be the way you are? Two things, very simple. Be kind to others. A large portion of what I talk about is just educating the gym and just being kind to others inside and outside of the gym and the second thing be kind to yourself there's two people that genuinely inspire and motivate me in this industry one of them very sadly has passed away late joe aesthetics an incredible human mm. and his work ethic his message your work Joey, ethic, your message we love you that i resonate with very well 
and to the people that I just consider very dear and close friends to myself. So you keep doing what you're doing, keep changing lives, you're entertaining, but you're also motivating. And I think not just the fitness industry, but the world needs more of that. So I hope your message reaches as far and wide as possible. Truly, I do. I mean, I would say the same to you, bro. I really appreciate it. For real, no, I, that means a lot, man. At the end of the day, it's not solely about what you look like. I don't want you guys feeling pressure from looking at somebody online and comparing yourself. I don't want you guys thinking that you yeah, only right? way to achieve Everybody your goals and achieve your needs your is by doing what you need. Right? I look this. Man, I'm happy with how I look, right? Oh. The goal of this video was to explain the reality of steroids. Now that's some good back rolling if I have to ask myself. Not comparing yourself to other people online. But if you are going to go down that route, do it right. You gotta know what you're doing. Take your health serious. It affects your health, it can affect your sexual health, your sexual function, your social relations, your criminal record. Focus on your nutrition, focus on your training. One of the most dangerous things with steroids is some of these causes are permanent. I think it's there forever. Once you've done it, you can't go back in time. It's permanent, deadly concern forever. Well, there's a right and wrong way of doing everything. And if you guys aren't getting on stage and making a check from this sport, I don't think it's necessary. You know, I could have got the Alienware laptop, which was a little bit more expensive, but it was so, like, bulky and freaking, like, so, like, it was loud, like, you know, lights everywhere. It's not for me. The Razer, though, is, like, that's, like, me, like, sleek, you know, sleek, <laughs> cool. Ask me. All right, what's next? What's next? Sebum. Yeah, let's watch some of this. Your leaky bathtub for power gorilla waterproof coffin seal sealer for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Dude, look at that. That looks so cool. The of protein is Dimatize ISO 100. It's hydrolyzed to absorb ultra fast so you can recover faster. Dimatize ISO 100 protein. It's formula for me. Ooh. I don't eat that shit. Protein powders? That's a waste of money. Yeah, let's go. Leave the chaos, and that's exactly what you're going to get. These are our favorite soapbox splashes from the last 10 years of mayhem at the Red Bull Soapbox Race London. Which one's your favorite? Let us know in the comments. All right. First up, a ridiculously top heavy soapbox. The first one. Let's go. So what they've all known each other. It's a plane. It's two meters, I think they, they said it was. This from... There they go. <laughs> To the top of the wick, performance of 32. I want to do one of these races so bad. Fear that the parachutes out the back might well be scrubbing up a fair deal of speed. Yeah. And you've got to get some get rid of the damn parachute. Oh my god. 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 Oh my Dude, that was face first. That's the worst. Oh, damn. How are you going to get started after that fall? That was huge. Why does it say my phone's overheating? The oh, oh my god, the shoe almost hits the cloud? Oh! Dude, the thing fell apart! <laughs> That was cool. The the two were out of the halfway down. That's so funny. Back in and they finished 
the run and the crowd are absolutely loving this From absolutely the bonkers box race london it's an austin powered soapbox that refuses to behave 420 meters ahead of the 23 420 meters that's perfect with glenn the pilot and lee the co-pilot this is the first test call and it's the oh. It's wet in there and it's slippy in there. And you've got to have a strong nerve and a strong soapbox. And this one wasn't up to the task. I need more Next chocolate. The soapbox driver finds out just how dangerous shots can be. They did oh my god. This speed in 2015 here at Ali Pali. It's impressive to look at. And the shark should be okay through the water, shouldn't it? Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, he's got look. <laughs> the back wheel's completely gone. Well, you don't often see a shark struggling in the water like that, but you do today. Get rid of the beach ball. They've made a real mess of that. The wheels, there's no chance. Unless they carry it from top to bottom, there's no chance. Look at the state of the wheel. Moving on, and Team Coffin Dodgers are about to show us how you finish in style. Off they go. Now, it's very, very streamlined. Obviously, a coffin isn't particularly wide, so it should be fast enough. It's when those spindly wheels can carry them down. They've got over the first... Oh, there's a bit of a wobble there. Almost lost it going over the wedge, but he manages to recover. He's losing one or two flowers along the way, but it's still upright, and he's rocketing down the course. Now he's got the apples and pears. Not a slight wobble on entry, but he's through there okay as well. He's really enjoying this too. The crowd like him, that's for sure. Now he goes through the chicane. There's still the kicker to come. Here he goes then towards the kicker. Straightens it up. Over the kicker. Oh, it's a fantastic run. Slightly heavy on landing. Really good run. Oh, he tries 